Good afternoon. My name is Joan Jennings. It's Wednesday, May 12th at 2 p.m. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting of the Public Art Committee to order. Um, just a little piece of uh, housekeeping. Uh, because of the date of noticing preceded um, the uh, emergency rescinding of some of the COVID regulations by Governor DeSantis, this meeting will still be conducted prior by the according to the prior COVID restrictions. Okay, um, Marissa, can you call the roll? Ms. Jennings? Here. Ms. Gregory? Here. Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Here. Mr. Sallow? Here. Mr. Stackhouse? Okay, um, Diane received over the weekend an email from Ms. Oberlander tending her resignation. Um, I guess her teaching schedules uh, changed and she won't be able to make the Wednesday meetings. So if you are aware of anyone who might be interested in submitting an application for the, you know, public art committee, please send them into the city clerk's office. Um, uh, Mark, are there any uh, guests in attendance on Zoom? I'll take that as a no. Um, I trust you all had a chance to read um, the minutes. Uh, I'd like to um, request a motion to accept. Move. Phil, second. 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 Uh, Trish, any comments, corrections, questions? Uh, minutes are accepted as submitted. Okay. Um, Next item on the agenda is Chief Young. He is not able to um, make it today. However, um, I did talk to him yesterday and he has been in touch with the uh, Tarpon Springs principal, uh, Mrs. Fatalitis. And the students felt that there was just not enough time for them to complete the mural, you know, as they're going into exams and graduations and all of that other things. So, um, the, uh, the project is still going to uh, you know, go underway, but um, they requested a postponement to the fall semester. And they requested that we reserve that space behind the bandstand for the Tarpon Springs High School project. So uh, is there any discussion on that or should we just, <clears throat> I think we're, so, I have a, a question, Joan. Certainly. Maybe I missed this in the chief's presentation, but I think he said that they planned an ongoing rotation of artwork by students, maybe on a semester basis. Right. Is this part of the Cops and Kids program? What's the genesis I, of it? I, I don't believe so. I think um, before his retirement, Chief Cochin was acting as a somewhat of a liaison between the PAC and the community. And I think uh, Chief Young has taken that on to some extent. And I think he was asked by the city manager to uh, make this outreach to the high school to talk about the art project. But I don't, I don't think it's, it's got a connection to uh, cops and kids. I think it's just with us. Any other questions, comments? Um, yeah, and it will be ongoing, but we're just not going to get this, this senior group to do it this year. So it will be done next year. Is everybody okay with, uh, do you think we need a motion? Okay. Can I get a motion to reserve the area behind the bandstand for the Tarpon Springs high school project? Awesome. Trish mm -hmm. second. David. Okay. So moved. Um, Diane, did we get a proposal from David Danforth about the uh, shark mural? We didn't have a proposal. We, we oh, did. Well, it's, oh, sorry. Thank you, Trish. Is anyone opposed to the high school project? Okay. Motion accepted. Thank you, Trish. Sorry, Diane. No, it's okay. Um, I did reach out um, to Mr. Danforth and um, told him, you know, your decision to to please um, put forth a, a proposal for the golf course. And uh, I believe it was his intention to do so, but I have not received it by the meeting. Okay. So that item will be deferred. Okay. Um, 
Okay, the Sisler Field mural, if you look in your packet, you will see um, a handout. Uh, <clears throat> I guess the, uh, the first mural by Ms. Swartley was completed and it's been very well received. Um, we got a nice write up in the Suncoast News and uh, she submitted a proposal for a second wall. And um, uh, David, do you have any comments about the second mural? So are the green balls, do they represent softballs? I didn't know if they played softball down there. Or they do, this. Diane? May I comment? Um, one of the things, um, when I went out to take photographs of um, her doing the original mural, I did get a phone call from one of the residents um, asking um, why it was just baseballs and not softballs. Okay. And um, uh, I said, not knowing anything about baseball, I said, well, I didn't realize there was a difference. Excuse my <laughs> ignorance. And uh, so uh, she said, the artist actually said that a lot of people came up to her while she was painting over the few days and had asked the same question and everything. And apparently they're larger balls, they could be white or they could be the neon. And so um, since she had so many requests there, she's, you know, she was saying right there, they do play softball in that very same area a lot, which is, I guess, why they had so many comments. So I just suggested to her, I said, you know, if you would like, why don't you just go ahead and give us a proposal for the opposite side of the building. And then I could just bring it to the public art committee the next time they meet. Mm -hmm. So this is, she did that. And um, the, so this is her proposal. Well, the, same, okay. the same artist, okay. okay. Uh, question yes, is, um, is the Little League the only um, team that plays on that Cicero field? I, I truly don't know. Well. Yeah, because it's, you know, it's talking about the little little league, but mm -hmm. so I was just wondering if they if anyone else played on it besides little league. Right. So I Diane, I assume the answer to David's question, since they're white and neon, that they probably are softballs. The neon ones probably. Yes, they are softballs. Okay. okay. Bill, do you have any um just an just an opinion, not anything more than that. The other side is much more fun than this side so that would mm -hmm. be my only comment i it, this kind of leaves me a little uh the other side is really really nice mm -hmm. it, and it, it's striking and a lot of people it catches a lot of people's eyes right. as they go down mirrors so i think that was a great place to put it and a, mm -hmm. and a, and a great graphic um, piece of art all right lucianne this design struck me more as signage yes. than a mural and um, I, um, if it's to be accepted by the committee, I would have two pretty important questions. Um, the first is, do, does the Little League organization use the Sponger logo? Yeah, I, I don't know. And, and second, there's been in the last year, a lot of Facebook comment about the sponge helmet that is on Sponger Field at the high school. And apparently it's not a sponge divers helmet. It's right. a Navy divers helmet. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, if that motif is to be used, I, I think the artist needs to make sure it's the correct um, design. But uh, absent those two questions, I um, I, I don't think this design measures up to the mm -hmm. to the first either. Right. Robert? I second that. I don't think this design stands up to what the other one is. It completely mm -hmm. looks like somebody completely different designed it or didn't design it mm -hmm. in, a, in a way. I, I just don't think it has any merit for that, that larger wall. Um, I think uh, I, the, the, the uh, baseball wall is already painted. Yeah, yeah. And very effective is there is there it yeah it is very effective and, and it, it would be very simple i think to throw a couple of softballs in there but i don't know <laughs> i mean there's a lot of design after the fact that goes on uh, but you know it, it wouldn't be too hard for the artist to do that maybe i don't 
I don't know. I mean, because she painted it directly on the wall. Am I correct? Yes. The baseballs, not yeah. this. This yeah, is the just baseballs. a draft. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it could be modified to include some softballs in there. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I don't think little kids play softball, though, do they? I think little kids play play little league ball. I, I, think, I think maybe the baseball. high school team does. I drove by there on my way in, and um, there are medallions about this size in the shape of a softball, and, and they say sponge or softball and have different kids' uh -huh. names okay. on it. So, uh, Excuse me. I was also told by the gentleman who called that um, his daughter mm -hmm. plays softball, and... Um, and they're teenagers so there's like i think there's a softball league and there's also like a fast pitch right i was going to say there that's so, about, that's the extent of my knowledge of yeah, softball is that too. there's there's one that's similar to baseball with an overhand pitch and then there's another with an underhand pitch which is a lot gentler i think they use it for younger teams mm -hmm. you know the the uh the slow pitch it's called yeah but if you were pleased with her first um attempt you know with the softballs um and we could always you could always tell her that you'd like her to submit a few other designs i i think that's going to definitely be the case folks is that how you can repeat that uh do they play anything else on that field I don't believe so. They don't play soccer or anything? No, it's strictly a baseball field. Oh, Plus, the other thing we kind of have to consider, Robert, it's is historically a baseball field, yeah, which Sisler. is why it's called yeah. Sisler yeah, Field. Sisler. Right. So I think that was the reasoning behind the baseballs. Exactly. In the first place. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, uh, Sisler didn't put, no, he might have played softball, but, you know, it's a it's a baseball field. Right. A softball field. Well, yeah, and, and you know, as Diane said, this is, uh, you know, the the baseball mural, I think, has been well and favorably received. We got a nice article in Suncoast News yes, about mm -hmm. it, and but we did also get, a, you know, a lot of comments about, you know, adding a softball feature, which I think we could do. You know, we do, we still do still have four more walls there. So I don't know if we want to, you know, do four more walls or just do them one at a time you know it's i think can, can i speak again and i think one at a time is a good idea because you have you know you have the kind of leeway that way to to let it develop right. i think of you know like in her case a wall of softballs would <laughs> be good. Right. and people would like that you know uh, the thing is about <clears throat> The difference between a softball and a baseball, they're structurally the same. Mm -hmm. It would just look like some of the baseballs are closer to you than I mean, <laughs> some of the softballs are closer to you. Right. It's kind of hard to do that in, in just with just the, the the difference of the softball and the baseball. Right. <clears throat> so well, I, I do think though that the general content consensus is that uh, this design is a no. And I can I take that as a show of nods? Yes, yeah, no. Okay. Um, so I think as Diane suggested, we can go back to her and ask for some alternate designs, Diane. Sure. Uh, and, uh, and, and I don't think she should have the uh, Tarpon Springs Little League on the sign, whatever it is. I, I don't like the writing at all. That no, was the writing my biggest. Is bad, but other organizations besides Little League play. So right. I don't think Well, we could add them, that. you know, as I said, we have other walls. <laughs> right. But uh, I, I, I think Lucienne hit the nail on the head. It's signage. It's not. Yeah. It's not art. So um, how many uh, designs do you want? Well, uh, well, I think possibly what I was thinking since the baseball seem, you know, the baseball mural seems to have gotten so much attention. Maybe put the call out again. How does everybody feel about that? Comments, anyone? Anyone? Hmm. I would kind of like to see maybe a baseball player or something, some type of action going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. That's what I, my thoughts are on it. Okay. And like you're saying, the Tarpon Springs, the Little League, probably not Little League, but mm -hmm. maybe more so Sizzler Field, but not huge. Maybe it's just in there somewhere mm -hmm. in a banner that's on there. 
says it, maybe something like that. Right. Trish? Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So? Yep. Lucia? Yeah, I, I don't really think we need Tarpon Springs identified. I don't either. I, yeah, I, I agree. We all know where yeah, yeah. we are. Sometimes me, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> There is actually in our rational moments. <laughs> there is actually a plaque out there that identifies. Mm -hmm. you know, it. Robert, you're in the same boat with us. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, uh, the the sign could be more about George Sisler <laughs> in some way. Or that right. yeah, I mean, that was. Just, I mean, that's I, the I, thing. Who is he? You know, you got to stop and read this little plaque or something like that. Why can't it be on the wall there? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> somehow, somehow honoring George Sisler, you know, one of Tarpon Springs' own. Yeah, I was, I was kind of hoping we'd get something that incorporated him in this. Um, yeah. Okay, but I think the, I'm going to ask everybody individually, but I think for the most part, uh, it's back to the drawing board, David? Yes, I believe so. I agree. Trish, Bill, Lucianne, Robert, okay, back to the drawing board. Okay. But well, you know, you can call Miss Swartley and ask her to submit some other designs. But I think we should put the, uh, the call out again. Okay. Um, okay. I've mentioned a couple of times that this was very well received, and as a result, we've got more work to do. <laughs> it's been suggested that we look at some other baseball and recreational fields as. Um, possible sites for some murals, basically with the same, you know, $1,000 uh, cap on the fees with reimbursement for materials, basically the same kind of thing. And um, Diane sent me a list of the uh, different fields. Uh, there's the sports complex fields and discovery playground, the rotary fields, also known as the boys and girls club, well, Sisler Field, Riverside Fields, and Dorset Fields. So, um, can I get some volunteers to perhaps take a field and go out and take some photographs of possible mural sites? <laughs> Do whatever you need. Oh, not over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyone else? I think it'd probably be good if we all kind of went to these different locations, but I don't know where the locations are. Okay. Diane, can you maybe send us all a, a, a list of the fields and their locations? Yeah. Because I think we can do drive-bys, but David, will you and Bill just take some photos? Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Do the same thing with a... Uh, little PowerPoint that we can bring in here and everybody can look at them then as we Perfect. toss them up on the. Yep. Screen. Is the Riverside Park on your list? I couldn't hear all of them. Yes. Uh, it was the sports complex fields and discovery playground. <laughs> yep. Um, the rotary field also, that's the boys and girls club. Sisler field, because we have other uh, things there. Rivers, well, that, that would be low priority for the photographs because I think we already got that. Riverside Fields and Dorset Fields. Maybe we can talk Robert into doing one. <laughs> I'm just trying to picture where they are. <laughs> I know what. I think it's off of Banana or something like that. Yeah, it? <laughs> that's the, probably the uh, Boys rotary. and Girls Club. Yeah. Yeah. Boys I'm trying to Club. think of what kind of a building there is for a mural. Um, it's very very difficult to be small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think we may run into with some of these locations, what we did with the dumpster corrals. They're just not amenable. Uh, and maybe, you know, three dimensional things would work better in some high traffic locations. Okay. But I think, uh, you know, not at... having raised kids in town, I, I think we just need to Need a visual. Need a visual, or even if we did, I think we need a reminder of, you know, what everything's going to look like. Okay, I think we'll move on. The illuminated art boxes. Um, Diane, over to you. Well, the call has gone out, and we've got about 33 um, entries so far. I think they're very high-end, um, very nice, you know, uh, artwork mm -hmm. that's come in. 
for this one. Actually, it's mostly paintings. There's not a, there aren't a, the majority of photographs like last time. So great. We still have one month, so I'll put it out again just to remind people. But mm -hmm. uh, they've been coming in pretty consistently. Great. So okay, you have um, a nice selection. Diane also um, told me we're still waiting for. Uh, this is of special interest to you. Uh, the weight load limits for the historic acorn poles, uh, solar versus hard wires in the weight. Uh, Jeff from Portaboard just responded to Diane this afternoon. Okay. So we haven't, obviously she hasn't had time to, uh, you know, do anything with the information, which I guess you'll share with Tom Funchen. Actually, he's been copied on everything. He and Joe Wraith have oh, good. received everything from Jeff. Okay. So I was just, you know, um, trying to plot them. <laughs> okay. Rob. Yeah, but if that just came in, so we'll discuss that again. Now, as far as locations and just to get a handle on, on what we were looking at, I know I'd sent a, an email to, to Diane. Um, are, are we looking to get five addition? We were talking about five to the north mm -hmm. of Tarpon Avenue on Safford mm -hmm. and five to the south um, and to locate those. Now, we look, we have five that we have in inventory right now Correct. that haven't been met. Right, were five we solar. Were we looking to get five additional ones? Or are we looking to, to remove five from the, the sponge dock area that, you know, and, and move down there? What, what, what direction are we looking to go? Lucienne, you're nodding. Do you have thoughts on this? I, I think we could thin out the sponge docks a little bit. I mean, I, I did, go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry, one of the issues on the poles are they're much shorter as you know and so one of the things that tom function and his people are trying to determine is that you know you because they're enough. shorter they're not going to be able to handle that 30 by 30 uh frame gotcha. because of the weight and different things even if they hardwired it in there so i gave jeffrey three different sizes that were smaller to accommodate that and from what I saw in the email today, like the weight just for the frame alone was like, I think it was, um, I think the first one was like 18 by 18, then 22 by 22, mm -hmm. and then 24 by 24. And it was like 50, 60, 70. So there was like added 10 pounds to each. So that's what they're trying to determine. Getting all the specs from him is that can those smaller um, lighting fixtures handle them so that's that's what tom's trying to so with the out. ones that we currently have in inventory we've got to find a different location probably for those mm -hmm. okay right. right and and they are solar the other thing that we could consider is uh obviously the sponge docks have no problem dealing with solar because there's you know bright sunlight there all the time um, if we do something on Safford, we, we may be forced to go with some that are hardwired because tree of the tree canopy. canopy. <clears throat> so um, I think that's something else. But um, uh, depending on technically, you know, what weight they can handle, I think I'd be loath to go below the 20 by 24 because they'd just get lost. Right? I mean, 20 by 24 is 20, 24 by 24. You said you wanted yeah. the um, Square. squares, right? Yeah. Well, the purpose of the squares, you know, is that they can accommodate horizontal and vertical images or square images. So mm -hmm. it gives us a lot of flexibility with the, uh, with the images instead of having rectangles because they can't, they, they can't be turned on the poles. So, um, so I guess there's a lot of computational things going on here. So we're, we're waiting to hear what we can use in, in the location, but we also need to take a look at the other five that we have. Right. And then also if we're going to call down the, the number of, of those on, on uh, mm -hmm. the sponge dock. I did identify four or five. There's ten. Mm -hmm. I did identify four or five uh, particular ones in on, on the sponge docks that 
are in conflict with either canopies coming out or the direction that they are towards the street that just didn't look as good or got lost. Oh, that, yeah, that's great. Some of them are beautiful, though. We have a stretch of them going down right along the actual docks there mm -hmm. that are just, you know, very nicely mm -hmm. positioned. Uh, but I think there are four or five that could, you know, possibly find a, a, right. a, a better location. So, right. But does the city on the GIS map have the light stands marked uh, on a layer? I believe they do. It's just, you know, just determine the, whether they could be used or not. Right. But, or whether there would have to be a specialty pole erected. Yeah. I mean, so. it'd be neat if we, we got... Uh, that layer that identified those locations that could, you know, based upon what light they have there, what could handle what, and then we'd be able to to position things. I think what Tom was trying to um, ask me to do is let's find out the the all the specs so that they can all determine, you know, what would be viable, you know, or not for those particular posts, and then kind of go from there based on what they find. So since they just got it today, um, I'm sure that I can probably give you, I can send out an email to you all after the, you know, the, the meeting between your meetings or something like that, but you'll have to discuss it at your June meeting then. Yeah. So I guess there's, there's a lot of homework for a lot of people on this one. But it'd be also nice for our GIS layer for the public art to be able to identify the exact locations of those exactly boxes so that for your presentation to mm -hmm. you know the board of commissioners right. that, that you have that it kind of shows how we're spreading out the the public right. art so, right um there is a new relatively new organization um the greek town historic and preservation is that correct lucian i think you might be Greek Town Preservation and Heritage Association. Thank you. Gaffa. Uh, right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, um, you know, uh, I had a discussion with Tina Bukovalis, and, you know, they seem to think that some of the art boxes down around Athens Street kind of intrude on the historic nature. So maybe that might be some of the thinning out area. And in the second call to artist, I included a culture um, category. So hopefully we can get some Greek topics for the boxes that fit. that would fit, you know. I had a thought while we were talking about specifications and sizes, do we know if there are other locations in town where the big poles are that would fit in with our underserved areas. Well, Mr. Bill, you want to take that on? I can. I just need some. I mean, that's where the GIS comes in if they have those marked, which I'm sure they they probably do. Um, but I'd have to have access to to at least that layer or a, a PDF of that layer mm -hmm. that I could. So we could start marking these. Right. And Lucienne, you know, you seem to have an idea perhaps. Maybe as you travel around town, you can make some notes. You know, I've, I've looked here and there when I think about it, but usually I'm zoned out when I drive and and I haven't found any that I mm -hmm. thought. The other thing is I think we wanted to stay off the real heavy traffic because we didn't want it to be a, a distraction distraction right. for drivers so you know because my immediate thought was the wayfaring signs that have just been redone are beautiful they are and they're on the larger poles mm -hmm. um but most of those are in the major arteries that are directing traffic so again you don't want to right away right from uh, and distract drivers is there any down at craig park not yet, not yet. the we've, only ones that we have are that. in the sponge docks Maybe Craig Parks would be a good spot to where mm -hmm. you're not, there's nobody really driving that's going to distract mm -hmm. them. Right. And a lot of people walk around there. We <coughs> have the events at night, like the luminaries, mm -hmm. things of that nature. You want to scope out Craig Park and come up with some location suggestions? Sure. Okay. Possibility. You have to be careful when you make the suggestion. I know. I need to stop talking. I need to stop talking.
Okay, any more discussion or thoughts about the art boxes? Okay, um, moving along, current project updates. Uh, Christopher Still, I think he's uh, just continues to put some finishing touches on the Advent Health mural. Um, and of course the construction itself is still underway. So I think we, sh we should be seeing something from that pretty soon. And then bingo, we have our biggie. Elizabeth Indianos has finished her mural and in your handouts is a picture of the completed mural with the identification key. And I only have one comment and that's only because I'm a weird editor. Number three, Seminole mother wearing hibiscus and baby. It sounds like she's wearing a baby. <laughs> she is. She's wearing a baby. <laughs> she's wearing, oh, she's quiet over there. She's wearing a baby. I thought maybe it should be with baby. Anybody else? Think yeah. weirdly like I do. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. It's <laughs> very hot biscuits and baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or Seminole mother and baby. Mother and baby, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wearing very hot biscuits, yeah. Do you need I baby? Even, I was Seminole mother. She's I think, do we even need hibiscus with hibiscus? Oh, we're right now. This is Mother this. Seminole. This is from um, Elizabeth as the artist. She wanted these things identified, mm -hmm. so I think we need to go with what her um, her preference is. And she did want to identify hibiscus because it is a major Florida flower. Okay, but I think we should use with okay. instead of and. Although you're right, she is wearing the baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing how much she got into this mural. Wow. So detailed. Just as a point of information, that arch over the door was not done by Elizabeth, nor is it part of the mural, just so everybody knows that was already there. Um, I've had to Google it, but number five, raccoon has two C's. Yeah, I've seen it spelled both ways, but I prefer this double C, I agree. Diane, I'm going to add the C to raccoon. Okay. There's so much detail in this, it's, it's mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, number 24, should we delete the R? Cowboys in soil, palmettos and brush. I don't think we need that R. Mm -mm. What does everybody think? Yeah, I agree. We'll delete the R. Can I ask a question? Certainly, Robert. Just a point of information, number 40. What, I'm sorry, uh, what number? Yeah, the alligator. I'm, I'm asking a question because we have a dog and we have an unfenced bit of water on, on Kramer Bayou. Are there alligators in any of the Anclote River? Okay. Heard of any alligators in the Anclote River? I mean, I'm not criticizing anything because they could be over in Lake Tarpon easily. But I, I just I uh, did see an alligator in the wild, but it wasn't an Anclo yeah, River. Yeah, but it, it wouldn't Anclo the Anclo River is, is mostly saltwater. It's tidal, right? Uh -huh. So I mean I have seen alligators in, in saltwater. They'll go there to hunt food, but I don't think they'd come that far down. Well, I don't think it's in the river. 
I'm not complaining about the alligator being there. You can't have a mural about Florida without an alligator. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not quite clear what your question was, Robert. It was just a piece of information. I have a dog that goes down by the water all the oh, time. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and I was worried, you know, we said, well, I don't think there's any alligators in, in, in the Anclote River or Kramer Bayou, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I know that there, there are quite a few in Lake Tarpon. Yeah, that would be, that would yeah. make sense. But I guess, you know, the, the idea of the mural is that these are all yeah. native flora and fauna. Did you want to bring up the metal um, piece that you had found for the... <laughs> oh, yes. Um, Diane and I were talking about um, th this key is going to be on the wall in the Cultural Heritage Center and it's gonna be 24 by 36. And um, I've used a company called Illuminize, which prints things on uh, aluminum panels. And I thought it might be an interesting idea to put the key on aluminum instead of on a canvas or on a board or something like that. And I priced it out and it was $310 with shipping, mounting, everything. You know, it's, you know, got the mounting on the on the back of the aluminum. David, what do you think of that idea? I think it definitely needs to be something <clears throat> that's gonna match up with what we have here. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be casted correctly, correct? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be printed directly on, on a piece of, uh, I think it's quarter inch thick aluminum. And you can ask for a matte finish, which would prevent glare. And I, I think in a place where there's going to be a lot of kids, it might not be a bad idea to have the metal surface. One of the challenges I had was finding a frame with non-glare glass. Yeah, so I think the aluminum would be a better, you know, call than having a, a frame in an area where you have, might have kids running around. But that's... I would say on a piece of metal would be probably ideal. Mm -hmm. Trish? Yeah. Your bell? Never seen it. Lucienne? Yes. Do you like the idea of the aluminum? I, I'm sorry. Do you like the idea of the, the aluminum? Yeah, I think if it's durable and. and... Okay. And uh, as I said, they can put a matte finish on it so that it, there'll be no glare. Robert? Anything? Yeah, it's fine. Just put it high enough up, the little kids can't get. <laughs> it's suspended from the ceiling. <laughs> okay, it's a go. Okay, for the aluminum. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, the Black Heritage Project. The selection panel is meeting on May twenty seventh at two p.m. in the Tarpon Springs Library. Um, I was going over the ordinance, and it seems that. Um, we can add committee members to a, a selection jury. Would anybody else be interested in working on this? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, Trish. Okay, great. So I guess we'll have, uh, you know, um, more about this project at the June meeting. Okay. Um, this thing, moving along, item 4A, the timeline to review new unsolicited artist proposals. Okay, and there's a handout in here. Okay, I think we just saw this, so we'll give everybody a chance, a few minutes to look at it. Yeah. 
Now, the purpose of this is an artist who's proposing something of their own, you know, in, you know, impetus. It's not something versus something that we're doing a call for. So if that explains that. Mm -hmm. Joan? Yes. Um, one thing that has come up um, <clears throat> is the sustainability committee. One of the members um, on the sustainability committee has approached the city asking if um, the Girl Scouts, a local Girl Scouts troop, are interested in doing an art project with storm drains. Oh, and okay. um, uh, city manager Mark LaCourse had mentioned that maybe this was something that they should bring to the public art committee. So I was asked, um, how would they go about that? Mm -hmm. And I told them about this form. And I also gave them a sample of Monica Swartzley's proposal mm -hmm. so they could see how they can simplify right. it. But um, that kind of came up out of the blue. Mm -hmm. So I just want to point out that if you limit it to certain times of the, of the year, then you may miss opportunities to work with other artists or um, organizations. Right. Yeah, I, I didn't think this was meant to be limited to certain times of the year. Or oh, I, I thought it was. No. Yeah. I hate to do this, but this is kind of a lot to absorb today. Shall we defer it yet again to the June meeting? What um, what are what are the points for deferring again? No, no, uh, not the form, but I, I noticed that the master plan, Diane submitted that with a lot of questions. Unless you think we're up to discussing well, I, it today. I think they're related. Um, if if okay. I may give the background of my thinking on this. Since I've been on this committee, we've had proposals from three different artists that we turned down because they were not in keeping with either where we wanted things mm -hmm. or what the project was. Uh, Mr. Danforth is the latest example of that. Mm -hmm. So rather than just have the door open for any kind of proposal, anytime, anywhere, any subject, I thought we might shape it a little. Mm -hmm. And this, this may not be the proper way, but I think we will, unless we give some guidance to artists on what we're willing to accept, mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to be continuing to disappoint people who look at the website and say, oh, I can submit a proposal for any cost, any location on any subject. Um, and then they get a rejection for whatever reason. So my idea was to tie it into the budget process so we knew how much money we'd have available for things right. that didn't originate here. Um, and then I tried to tie it to the master plan locations okay that we designated last summer mm -hmm. when we redid the master plan okay okay now so, i now i got it okay yeah that's that's why i put those two pages of the master plan in this mm -hmm. we've already eliminated some of the locations right. that we adopted last year like innis park right um the water tower and there are others that are questionable that we haven't gone ahead with so mm -hmm. my idea was simply to provide a little guidance so yes that, no thank you thank you you've just yeah. clarified it for me i'm sorry yeah. okay um okay so basically we're going to modify this for 2021 I mean, I just prepared it for discussion. Right. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. Not, yeah. 
Okay. And um, I didn't know whether it should be May, June, July. Maybe it could be even as late as September mm -hmm. since the budget year doesn't start till October. But um, we may want to do it at a different time of year. Mm -hmm. So it, it's all up just for. Right. Well, the Bahamian Sponger statue, that obviously is going to be retitled the Black Heritage Project. Um, I was at the um, commission meeting last night and Tina Bukovalis uh, read at the very end of the meeting, um, very interesting uh, statistics from the uh, census. And she did send it to the selection panel and it's gonna be included in an, an appendix. So, um, you know, it, it gave me some real insights as to, you know, who was here first and you know how how tarpon evolved and i thought it was brilliant of her just to go to the census numbers you know because that's just the raw data of you know who was living here okay but uh yeah thank you thank you lucienne welcome I, I think maybe another advantage to looking at this yearly is that we sort of update our mm -hmm. locations because we, we do make interim decisions. Right, right. Maybe we even look at a six month cycle. <clears throat> so, you know, July for the October 1st and then January for, you know, a mid year review. So twice a year, you're taking a look at it and you're allowing people to make submissions and you can mm -hmm. probably make decent judgment calls. By right. I think I do agree with the map. They should have a map that kind of, like we're saying, these are the locations. So this is where it's at. Mm -hmm. So nothing is convoluted. <laughs> you have maps. <laughs> right. We have maps of plenty. Okay. Okay, so going back to the application form. Okay, I think that's great that uh, you added the budget year scope, the 2021 to 22. Um, I don't know, do we, we since this is supposed, supposed to be open-ended, how, how do you feel about the deadlines? Do we need deadlines? <clears throat> Diane, we usually put deadlines in the calls, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we do, do we need that? We could take that line out. Okay. Um, so are you saying this is going to be available year round? Yeah. Okay. Or I think... I think by Lucy Ann sort of pegging it to the budget year, I think we should look at it anticipating each budget year, kind of reflecting what Bill just said, maybe take another look at it. You know, by the way, I have some good news. At the uh, commission meeting last night, they uh, discussed a new development on Route 19 Big Dan's car wash. <laughs> and it's going to be a car wash, gas station, convenience store. And it's going on 19, where the old Japanese restaurant has was. The old what? Japanese restaurant. It's a little north of the uh, by the uh, West Lake Animal Hospital. Thank you. <clears throat> and unfortunately, we're also using losing an adult store. That's going to be torn down. 
So, um, but it's a it's a huge project, and uh, th they are giving us the cash, not not opting to do an art artwork. So uh, we're looking at you know a, an infusion into the budget if the project goes through. So keeping my fingers crossed. Okay. All right. Um, cost. That's a good question. Do we want to put a limit on it? I guess. I guess it would depend on the project. So I kind of see it as, is it from like 1000 to $5,000? So we're not getting, we're getting something that's going to be nice, but it's not going to over. Right. Well, the 1000 to 5000 would be kind of almost like the, the student things we're talking about, like for the, for the recreation fields. But right. this, this is open-ended for our other larger projects. So for anything, it could be, okay, statues, anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sculptures. <clears throat> so but keep in mind that, you know, anybody could submit, you know, a proposal to you with any amount on it, and it's your prerogative to say, no, we don't have it in the budget this right. year. We'll look at it for, you know, an upcoming, you know, fiscal okay. year. You so, know. Yeah, so the answer to do we need to limit would be no. I'd say no. Yeah. Uh, scheduling proposed start date completion. Should that be date certain or should we also leave that open? I'd say open. Trish? Yeah, I think open. Bill? Yeah. Lucien? Robert? Open? Okay. The proposed installation site, and I think that's perfect, not the preferred location in the attached master plan. Okay, proposal will reviewed, be reviewed by the PAC at the scheduled meeting following the submission deadline, second Wednesday of the month. I was unsure about that. I didn't know whether we would need more time than that to get the applications ready for our review. So that's really kind of a question for Diane. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As long as it comes in a week before the meeting, you know, and, and it's, mm. if it's complete, you know, which most artist proposals have come in pretty complete, all we have to do, yeah, it, it should be fine. Do you um, want to add a, a phrase in there, something to the, your proposal must be received at least a week prior to this next scheduled PAC meeting? To be considered, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or well, we just need to set the deadline. Yeah. Right. For each. I think it's easier to do it one week prior to the meeting because sometimes during the holidays, what if your meeting changes or something? Right. Yeah, so I think we put at least a week prior to the um, scheduled PAC meeting to be considered in the second Wednesday of the month. Marissa, you can clean that up, make it grammatically. Yeah. If the proposal is approved by the PAC, will be scheduled for review and approval by the City of Tarpon Springs Board of Commissioners. If approved, a formal contract will be provided for you for review. Do you want to put uh, provided to you by the City Attorney? Lucienne, do you think we should include that, that the contract's coming from the City Attorney?
Now we're back to that bugaboo. Do you want to put anything in here about insurance? It's a requirement. Yeah. Right. Trish? Uh, yeah, we need it in there. Okay, Bill? Yeah. Is he in? I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first um, section does require proof of insurance. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, something like um, if approved. Insurance. That's the word I'm looking for. Not necessities. Insurance. Requirements. Is there a stock phrase we use when we put out a call for artists that describes that? Can we just borrow that? Uh, there, based on what Tom Trask gave me uh, for the artist requirements, um, I can put that on the website and also on this form. You know. Okay, think this, this is the form on the website right now, the one that I mm -hmm, pencil mark, mm -hmm. we could go ahead and add it, you know, or have it, you know, see, because it's going to be in the contract anyway, you know, it's like, because we have their proof of insurance, um, as required by the city of Tarpon Springs. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, that'll just give it that last dot on the first, see the first group of bullet points. It's the very end. Proof of, his, of insurance as required by the city of Tarpon Springs. I could do that too, and then put it on the website. Oh, okay. should, should the specifics of how much insurance they need uh, be included in that? No, because it would depend on what the city attorney tells them. And I think it would depend on the scope of the project. I think somebody you know, painting a mural on a scaffold might need more insurance than somebody painting on a wall. Okay. Well, didn't Mark, of course, say that if it was over a thousand, they needed to go by this, the, the typical one, so. Right. Robert, you're, you're experienced with artist insurance. I can, I can only assume that there's some kind of sliding scale, right, for insurance for different types of work. Um. Or is it just general liability? There's a general liability, and then there's uh, quite often uh, other other kinds that um, are like uh, just uh, um, employee. If you have employee or representatives of you and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, it, it goes on and on that way. But it's just a general liability. Mm -hmm. Is that what you need to to present? And uh, then you go through the contract stuff and you, you uh, work with the, the, the person writing the contract, the mm -hmm. city in this case, and you work out all that kind of detail stuff if it's that complicated. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, um, cities like to have boilerplates. And so that boilerplate saying you have to have liability insurance. Mm -hmm. And that that's the, isn't that right, Dan? I mean, that's, yeah, the, um, that's, actually, that's the basic thing and you don't get anywhere without that. Right. Way back when we hashed all this out, remember we all did, mm -hmm. um, we all did research on different cities and what they required with, from their public art committees as far as insurance goes. And we found that we were pretty much right along with the rest right. of them. You know, they all have very high requirements, you know, mm -hmm. to protect. I mean, the there city. are things like if you use your vehicle, that needs to be insured. Right. Uh, if, if you have employ, if you have assistance, uh, do you have workers comp or whatever that is? I mean, mm -hmm. those things, you know, just just add on to it. Right. I don't think you'd be running into too many people that way mm -hmm. with, with this budget that we're dealing with on this. And, and Anybody who solicits something that's going to be complicated is probably going to do all their 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 homework first, right? Uh, in order to and 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 to, with, with the idea that they they might be shooting for the moon while you're you're not, you know, and mm -hmm. and they need to know that right away. So I don't think you're going to have anybody having a very complicated thing where they're going to be up on a uh, on a uh, cherry picker up, you know, thirty mm -hmm. feet up in the air. 
which would require certain kinds of stuff. Like, right. I mean, you could get into all sorts of OSHA requirements and right, right. I mean, construction is construction, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we usually don't run into that, but muralists do sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's generally you, the, the, the whole gateway into the thing is you have to have your liability insurance. Mm -hmm. And you, you got to pay for that. Right. So I guess, Lucien, how do you feel? Should we just leave a proof of insurance or should we add something onto that phrase? I, I, I think we ought to prepare them for the fact that there are insurance requirements. Right. And you know, just leave it as a general right. statement. Okay. Right. Do you have any other suggestions or modifications to this that we haven't already covered? You did a wonderful job on it. Um, I, I guess we just need to decide as a group, um, do we want to try to limit submissions in this way, mm -hmm. first and foremost, and then um, how? Mm -hmm. David, how do you feel about that? <clears throat> well, that's that. Then you're saying this is exactly what I want. I mean, like you're saying, it could be um, a sculpture, it could be anything like that. So it's kind of hard to put a definitive price on all that. Okay, so you want it to be an open process, in other words. <clears throat> I believe so. Okay, Trish. Yeah, I think so too. I think it'd be very hard to limit. To put limits on it. Okay. Since, well, since yep. these are just, yeah, since they are just uh, not solicited by us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, think I mean, unless, open, yeah. unless we had several of these forms, it was like you do this one for a thousand to five, and then you do this one for 10,000 to 30, or so on and so forth. Maybe that, you know. Yeah. Diane, that might be interesting. It might be you know i'll do it or help you with it to just do a very simple form for the thousand and under one because i think at that that stage we're you know appealing to young and student artists how do you feel about that to just create a a simpler more streamlined form for the thousand dollar and under projects i think it, i think you'd find more people would be be able to do that and would be intimidated by the other. Mm -hmm. and so you're going yeah. to you're going to uh, sort of self uh, you know you're going self destruct. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to cut down your, the amount of applications mm -hmm. for, for some of the above ones, but you'll maybe be more attractive to some of the people with a thousand dollar and under ones. Right. Somebody has to start somewhere. So uh, mm -hmm. right. So I think that's probably a good idea. Yeah, Lucianne. Yeah, it's more streamlined for the lesser projects. Yes, I would hate though to discourage a great idea from coming through at, right. at yeah. an upper limit budget. Sure, as right. long as we're still open to that. Oh, absolutely. I just thought to to do this because this is this is necessary. Yeah. But you know, to just do a streamlined one, you know, strictly for the thousand dollar and under ones because you don't have to go through the insurance sure. rigmarole. And as Robert said, I think it would be less intimidating. And, you know, people that are going to be, you know, submitting ideas for the $1,000 and under are going to be, you know, young artists or students and, you know, things of that sort for the most part. So yeah, I really liked what Monica Swartzley did for her proposal. Mm -hmm. I thought it was nice and simple. Right. And, you know, just kind of here's my here here is what I'm going to do. And the, these are the supplies I'm going to use. She priced it out, you know, individually, right. and then showed an example of what she was going to paint. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think that's nice and simple for right, right. And for a project like that, that's really all you need, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, we're looking at something like, you know, the mural Elizabeth Indiana does, that's obviously a lot more, mm -hmm. you know, complicated. So, okay. So, um, can I entertain a motion to um, accept this form and materials as modified? 
it's the end. You did it. Do you want to? I'm an SME. Yeah. Okay. David, second? Second. Okay. Uh, David, do you approve? I approve. Trish? Mm -hmm. Yes. Bill, Lucienne, David, I approve. Okay. Accepted unanimously. I do like the idea of the thousand and under. So mm -hmm. I do too. Separate having that things. segregated to to where people can see it and they know. Right. That's simpler. Yeah. Well, the big thing is it's eliminating all of the insurance and other complications. Right. Can we yeah. have that? Like the link, it says a thousand and above insurance required, a thousand under, no insurance. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, like that. put that on the website. City um, covered under the city policy. We can put so that no no additional insurance required. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think technically like at a thousand dollars and under, they're considered a limited some subcontractor, which allows them to be insured under the city's liability policy. I think I have one other question. <laughs> sure. This this proposal that came in at thirteen hundred that we're not going to go through with. Is there any way that we could, like, say 1300 obviously, it's over 1000 I think we've had this discussion before. Could we pay for the materials, say the materials are 300 and then pay the artist 1000 or is it just... Yeah, no, that's that's exactly what's happening here. Okay. Yeah, no. It, so it's... then they're still under the city. Right, library. yeah. The thing is that the, the fee max is out at 1000 Okay. Plus, it's 1000 plus reasonable cost for materials okay so this is exactly she gave us exactly what we needed okay which was the artist fee a thousand and then she itemized the uh, the materials okay that makes sense okay okay um anything else we want to discuss in in june lord it's june already so um, so on that thousand and under, should we make sure that <clears throat> that's put in bold that it's the fee that they get before all their materials? Right. Yeah, we can. We so can when they fill that out, they right. know all that too. Because if they're thinking a thousand and they're putting their materials together and it's $500, they might not want to do it. Exactly. Yeah. That, okay. Diane, do you have anything from the city? Um, no, but I'll just keep in mind that at the next meeting, you'll be voting on all the artwork from the second call for mm -hmm. the eliminated art boxes. Okay. And you're going to send that to us prior to the meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We are forewarned and forearmed. <laughs> okay. And um, with um, Ms. Oberlander's absence, if there is a uh, an absence we're gonna need robert to step in because of somebody i cannot vote twice <laughs> <laughs> early and often <laughs> okay uh do i hear a motion to adjourn lucienne the meeting is adjourned at 308 thank you all very much